Hello guys, my name is Larry. Welcome to the YouTube channel called 956 Studio. And today I'm going to give you what I promised you several videos back on this old sawmill. This is a 158 inch blade build. It is all homemade and I've been running for quite some time and it's been very efficient and has made me quite a few dollars on the side cutting that old wood that we cut in many of our other videos. Now, I'm going to give you a lot of the dimensions today. If I miss a couple of them, make sure you go down below in the description. Hit me up, send me a little message, and I'll put in there whatever I missed out on this video. We're not selfish and we're not greedy. We're going to give you the information you need, hopefully, if you're interested in building a sawmill just like we built here today. So for starters, we're going to go over here to the wheels. Both of these wheels are 18 and 3 quarter inch wheels, and we are running 1 quarter inch shaft. And on the shaft, we've got the bushing you see here. These are the bushings, just like you see right there. Now you can run, we have one and a quarter and we have one inch. Our one inch, one and a quarter, one and eight. That's what we sell on our website at tx-covers.com. Down here you're gonna see, we're running our in-house blade guide rotors. We're running inch and a quarter blades, so we're running inch and a quarter blade guide rotor. These will have two bearings, one on this side, one on that side, and fit a half inch bolt or shaft. You'll have to have threads on the end of it, and you'll put a spacer in between the bearings. We ship with these rotors with the bearings, and you'll tighten it up to where it's snug. These things, I've never replaced them in the last six months, eight months I've been running this sawmill. Again, if you need these or you need the pulleys, go to tx-covers.com, look under the industrial section. So we've covered the pulleys, we've covered the bushings. This, you can buy just about anywhere online. We do not sell those, but there's nothing but a lot more your deck, I guess call it your deck pulley, your blade, uh, what do you call it? Your deck on your lawnmower, this is the, uh, the, the takes the slack out of the belts. Back here, you got a 10 and 3 quarter inch pulley that drives the main shaft that pulls the actual blade. Now, these pulleys run a 59 inch, and I don't quote me on it, but I'm pretty sure it's a 59 inch belt industrial belt that rides just above the pulley itself that drives this. Now what you're going to see if you look at some of my videos, you're going to see that the way this sawmill is running, which is this way, counterclockwise, is kicking the dust out that way, that you're going to have a little slack up here at the top, and this is going to be really, really tight whenever you're running and you're cutting a log. You're going to find that on every sawmill. You just don't see it because they have this all covered up, so you're not seeing the slack that it has here. But on my, my pulleys, I mean, on my videos, you're gonna see that. When this thing is running at the RPMs wide open, it should be running at, the speed it's supposed to be running at, you're gonna see there's a little slack up here because whenever that's going into that log, that pulley is dragging it around and it has nothing to do but grow slack in it here. So don't let that alarm you. That's what you're gonna find in every sawmill that's out there, not just home built. Now I'm gonna go back up here to the top, just a second. This is nothing more than a one inch shaft these are two of your pillar block bearings. Shaft running through there. And up here on this top here is another pulley and another smaller pulley. And I've just got this welded up here so I can turn that hand crank over yonder and actually crank the sawmill up or down. Pretty easy to do. And I took some cable, just wrapped it around here, took a clamp, holded it over here. And if you need to adjust it, you got a turnbuckle right down here on each side. If you need to adjust your head, you're able to do that. Now let me cover some of the actual dimensions. Let's do the front first. This will be the easiest to do. And then it's going to be kind of tricky for me because I'm going to have to run around, do this, move the camera and so forth. Okay, from this pulley to the center of this pulley. Now I'm saying center to center. Now that's with the blade partially tensioned, not completely. So you got to keep that in mind when you're doing this. It is gonna be 49 inches from the center of this pulley to the center of this pulley on an inch and a quarter shaft. Now, if you got a different shaft, say one inch, it's gonna be a little different. So you gotta keep that in mind. Now then, we're gonna to go to the top of the sawmill. From the outer edge up here to the outer edge over here is 42 and three quarter inches. Now that's going to be the same on the back side. Back here on this piece over here, 42 and 3 quarter inches. Now keep in mind that this is setting on top, 
And this one is sitting on the inside of this outright, on the outside uprights on that side over there. So don't get confused there when you get, don't get your measurements all mixed up. 42 and three quarter, end to end, this front side, and you're trying to achieve 42 and three quarter outside to outside on the other side. This piece here, up and down from the top of this. Oh, let me back up. And over here on this side, the very top of it, down to the floor. Now, I'm not showing you that because I got to move the camera to do that. But from the top of this to the floor is 68 inches. On the back side, let me move the camera. From the top of this to the floor, again to the floor, 60 inches. And you're asking me why do I have a drop here? Well, didn't in, didn't intentionally build it that way. You see, I had to add a little section over here, and I'll tell you why. I made it perfectly level. But see the motor? It will hit the exhaust will hit this up here, and that took away from the clearance on my log down below on the height I was cutting. Now the width I can cut 31, 32 inches but the height it took away from it because this can only go up so high. So I had to add on this piece here and bring this up another eight inches, six inches and create a little drop back here. So now you understand why it's got an angle on it. The battery of the water tray here is 21 and three eighths by nine and three quarters this way. There's my battery box over there. It's electric start, a 420cc Predator engine, which folks so far have been a pretty good little motor. I just change the oil in and I keep running a dog out of it. All right, over here, we've got a boat winch. And really the purpose of the boat winch I don't really use it that often. I have it here simply because I take this cable off here and I can run it to the other end of my tracks. And I got a little pin down there, I put this on and I can crank this and drag it along the speed I need it to. But what I found out doing that is that you, you can't feel really the great in, you know, intensity of the depth, or the depth of the field is, is a lot easier and better when you're pushing that sawmill along because you can feel when it's kind of want to tighten up and bind up and you're able to slow down well this here you're multiplying multiplying and multiplying you don't feel it at the law you hear the motor starting to bog down a little bit but it, to me it's so much easier just to push this thing if you got it built right the tracks are set up right it's simple to push it it's not, it's not a lot of a lot of work i mean i probably travel back and forth on tracks way faster than an automated machine can so to me it's no benefit to it pretty much simple up on top up here Little old bitty small sprocket, a bigger sprocket up here, chain, maybe a little latch just to keep it locked in place. Just like you see there, that's all it does. When I want to release it, I just bring it down like that. If I want to go up, I just do up like put it like that. Now then, let's get to the other part. Let's get down here. Got all three on all four points here. This is a little larger because it gets more, it does more of the work than any of the other, other pieces of all thread. So I made this a little bit bigger. You got a nut back here, a nut back here, a nut here, and a nut here. You've got one and a quarter shaft, like I told you on the front. You got your block, your bearings. And uh, the plate is nine inches by 12 inches and it's three eighths inch thick. And you gotta have that. You just can't get away with anything smaller than that on your plate. Uh, you'll, if you do, you have a lot of flex and it just will not work properly. Over here, you got your turnbuckles to adjust the this up and down, up and down, up and down. And what else can I tell you? I believe that's about it. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into uh, the actual sizes of the steel that we're using. Okay, let me see if I can get more cripple butt down here. Now what we're gonna be using on the bottom down here, this is two inch, this is two and a half inch. 
Now, the two and a half inch is what you're gonna use on the outer part of the rail on the back, and I'll show you that in just a second. But this is eighth inch, two inch. Okay, now you got down here, is, this is three sixteenths square tubing, and this is two and a half, two and a half inch, I believe. Now this is two and a half, this is two inch. Now, this is the two inch that's gonna slide inside here, and keep in mind what I'm showing you right now, because we're gonna go to the back and I'm gonna show you what I use that for. So, two inch, this is one eighth inch, this is three sixteenths, two and a half inch. All right, you see this, 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 this is the same tubing that's on the very bottom, square tubing. It's a two and a half square, it's square tubing. This is two inch. Now, this piece here, I've made it approximately 13 inches tall. And you got, this is also two and a half inch from here to there. Now the two and a half inch from, from the inside of the opposite, of the opposite side, inside to inside, is going to be about, uh, let me see here. 38, whoop, 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 whoop. flush with this to the opposite side is 38 and one quarter inches. Now, I would not weld that solder when you're building it. I would leave it kind of flexible until you take the carriage and you go up and down with it to make sure that all your dimensions are proper. One thing I didn't give you are gonna be the dimensions on the very bottom. Now let's get back to that. All right, on the very bottom, from here, from the outside of here to the outside on the opposite side is 36 inches. Now, I've got an angle iron here, it's nine and a quarter inches, and then I've got it flipped up like you see here. I've got a four inch box here and a four inch caster there. Now these are greasable, heavy duty cast four inch wheels. Now we do have the four inch wheels and we have the three inch wheels. If you want the carriage to run a little bit lower, you can order the three inch wheels from us or the four inch. Now we do have those also at tx-covers.com under the industrial section. Again, folks, if you see something on the sawmill that I didn't explain in details and you need the information, post the comments down below and we'll damn sure get them to you. I'm trying to think if I missed anything else that's relevant to, to the build. As I stated earlier, it's real important to make sure that you angle, put that angle in those wheels. Uh, and I'll, I'll explain that one more time just to make sure we got it covered. You want this side of the wheel to be further out a little bit and this side in on both wheels because there is going to be some flex in the shafts. Now if you're running a one inch shaft or a one and eighth inch shaft, keep in mind that you have more flex on that shaft than you will with the inch and a quarter. That's why my very first sawmill, if you go back and look at my first sawmill that I ever built several years back, it was a 196, 197 inch blade. I used one inch shaft, I had a lot of flex because you had to put a lot of tension on it because you was pulling so, putting so much pressure on that shaft on that 197 inch blade. So, man, I, can, I can't stress that enough. Bring this in on this side, uh, in on the, to the back on the side, and out on this side, so whenever you tension this blade up, it's gonna, what it's gonna do is it's gonna pull those things. If you got them like, like that, it's gonna pull them back in alignment and your blade will track just perfect. Well guys, I hope I shared some information that was helpful to uh, you. I don't know everything in this world and I'm not a professional sawmill builder. I'm not a very good welder, but I'm a pretty damn good professional dauber. And I'm sure there are gonna be some critical people out there. Oh, you junk this thing up, you can't weld. No, I can't weld. But you know what? I won't overload my ass, you overload your ass because I don't see you building anything. If you do put them down there, let's, let's look at what you got. My head ain't all swole up, but at the same time, myself is not the type, I'm not the type of person that's selfish and greedy. I will pass on what knowledge I have to try to help you keep your costs down of building a sawmill in the future. So if you like the video, make sure you hit the thumbs up, like and subscribe, and uh, make sure you visit our website at tx-covers.com for the parts that we have under the industrial section. And you might save you a few dollars there. And if you need support, you can get our phone number at that time, and we'll be glad to take your call if you need some help on your build. Again, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.